The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminas on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Um, also those watching Oriented with Television as well. Um, a lot to break down. We had the postseason football playoff matches are set. Soccer regionals are set. Um, we're going to break down a lot of football today. We're going to recap week nine. Um, my thoughts on each of the games, um, each team going into the um, next season. And also we're going to preview the um, 13 teams that are in the postseason representing the OAA. Of course, it's a um, much better number than nine of last year. So a lot to break down. Um, soccer, of course, you got um, we're looking at the regionals. Of course, we have um, region number two at um, East Lansing. You got Clark's taking on Seaholm. On the other side, you have Novi Detroit Catholic Central and Okemos. Um, I think that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, I, I like Clarkson to win that region because, yeah, they got, I mean, yeah, the three teams prior to, they all got one loss. But I think with, um, but I, I just think Clarkson, the way that their schedule's been, I think the Wolves will win that one. And then on the other side, over at Tro- over at Adams, you have Adams taking on Troy. Um, and on the other side, you have New Baltimore Anchor Bay taking on, um, um, Frazier. Um, there's a reason why Troy's ranked number one in the state for a reason. Um, yeah, I expect New Baltimore to be able to take on Troy. Um, and I think it's going to be a really interesting one, but I really like um, um, Troy to get past that. So we'll see what happens. Um, regional finals underway. We got um, cross country um, regionals this week. Of course, you want to take a look at that. They're on my blog at I'm Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. If you want to take a look at the regional previews for cross country, also the um, soccer regionals as well. Um, let's go down to football. Um, obviously, um, week nine, of course, um, ended up um, had some really interesting games for sure. Um, you know, when you look at the games, obviously, um, you know, I think probably the biggest win of the week has to be Verndale's win over St. Clair Shore Salt Lake, fifty four twenty one. Um, I saw the highlights of that game. Um, Ferndale ended up being the last team qualified in for Division Two for the playoffs. Um, you know they won the gold this year. They had a they played Grand Rapids West Catholic it was a really interesting game there. I mean like, but they found a way enough points just to get in there. I thought the Warren D. LaSalle um, UD Jesuit game was a huge game for Ferndale, um, and UD Jesuit um, fell on that one to for, to um. The um in the prep bowl and that ended up being a big deal for Ferndale getting into that last spot. Um, so when I look at Ferndale, um, you know when you look at Ferndale going forward, um, they're back in the playoffs. Big deal for Coach Eric Royal and his team. They've missed the playoffs the last two years, um, but it's a huge accomplishment for them to get into the postseason. Um, to see where they've been, um, they're rolling right now. Um. Getting ready for um, their postseason match with Seaholm. Um, we're going to preview that one a little bit. Um, St. Clair Shores Lakeview beating Berkeley 29 0. Um, it's been a long year for Coach Sean Shields and his team. Um, just a struggle. I didn't expect them to go 1 and 8 to close the 2 and 7 to close out the year. Um, it, it was, it's, it's been tough for, the, for, for them. I mean, like, you know, take the step back. It's, it, it's, it's really difficult for them, to say the least, for them to take that step back. And it's really unfortunate for them to end up the year, close out the year that way. Um, you know, so there's going to be, you know, they do have some pieces coming back, heading in for next year. So when you look at Berkeley, um, they should be back in the thick of things heading into next year. So we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Um, Garden City 60, Pontiac 24. Um Pontiac 0-9 again. Um, I mean, like, Garden City's a heck of a team. They're a good team this year. They're in the playoffs. I think they're in Division 5. Um, but for Pontiac, you know, you know, it's just, for them, it's just keep building the program. Keep building the program and don't take steps back. I mean, like, basically what I can say right now for them is, you know, you got some pieces coming back, obviously. I mean, like, but you just got to keep the program 
there. You just got to keep everything stable. And if you can do that, then, you know, you're going to have a team there in Pontiac that I think could, um, you know, they'll get better. But I really think, you know, next year when you look at non-conference, um, they're going to have to really, you know, maybe find a team, you know, that they can match up with pretty well with, you know, that they can get their first win, you know, snap that long as soon as you can stay. And I mean, like, there are teams out there that they have a shot to do it. So we'll see what happens. I mean, Davian Hall coming back, that's a big deal for them next year. Um, but just really unfortunate for Pontiac, you know, to close out the year at 0-9. Um, but I really like the direction that program's going, though. So that's a positive for them. Um, going forward there with Pontiac. Um, Avondale 51, Fitzgerald 25. Um, Avondale, of course, winning that one, getting ready for their big showdown in the postseason. Birmingham Brother Rice in Division III. Um, Tyler Herzog's had a nice year. Um, offensively, they've been solid. Um, I think Avondale's a team that, you know, they could be scary, but it's a difficult matchup. Um, for them, but we're going to preview that one in Division Three. Last three games, Royal Oak has been outscored 105 to nothing. That kind of tells me something where the program's at right now. And that program is in rock bottom. It has absolutely hit rock bottom. I mean, and, I, and that's being honest with you. You lose a good class coming out of there. You're losing players like Hudson Seidel, Makai Jenkins, Ellie Finch, you're losing those type of kids, you know, and the fact that they went out, lost three straight games by combined 105 to nothing, um, and then you add, and then of course you, um, you know, then of course you add, in the last four weeks, 135 to seven. You know, that's, that's sick. If there's a program that needs a complete reboot and start over, it's Royal Oak. I mean, I don't know where you go from here with that program. I don't know where you go. I mean, you kind of want to say to yourself, okay, um, here's a program, you know, you, you, you're making, you made a tr big transition to Coach Justin Truett this year. Then you had the positives and you had the negatives. I mean, now you might be in line for a complete start over. And... And it's unfortunate for those kids over there at Royal Oak. It's really unfortunate for them. I mean, like, the fact that you have to go from rebuild to rebuild to rebuild. They need some stability over there. You know, they need some stability there that can make sure that, you know, everything is smooth. You know what I mean? Everything's smooth. That's what they need right now at Royal Oak. That's what they need right now. So, that's my take on the gold right now from Week 9's recaps. Um, let's go to the blue now. Obviously, um, Utica f over Farmington, 35-28. I can't believe Farmington blew this game. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I just can't believe they blew this game. I mean, how in the heck were you? You were up in this game. You were leading. I watched the highlights. You blew that game. They're the reason why you're going to Temperance in the first round. You could have had a home game. There's a lot of what ifs surrounding Farmington. A lot of them. I mean, it's unfortunate. You blew that game against Utica. Utica's two wins this year were against OA schools. They knocked off Rochester week one and then Farmington and then Farmington this week. I'm concerned about Farmington this week. I really am. Um... Then you have um, Troy 41, Frazier nothing. Um, Troy looked good again. Frazier I don't think is very good this year. Um, you know, so but we're, we're going to find out what Troy's really made of this week. Um, Troy Athens 23, Utica Ford 22. Good win for Coach Tom Cook and his team to um, finish at 5-4, and four, but they didn't have enough points to get into the playoffs. Um... That loss to Troy really was the one that killed him. Um, I think when you look at um, Troy Athens, they're going to be better. I, I think they're going to be solid. I think they're going to be fine um, heading into next year. I mean, there's a lot of questions with them, but I think they're going to be fine. Um, and then you have Bloompy Hills, North Farmington. That was a that was a classic. Um, twenty eight twenty one. 
in favor of Bloomfield Hill as the game went back and forth. I mean, like, um, you know, Bloomfield Hill scored first and North countered, you know what I mean? Sort of like that. Um, North had a chance to win it on a Hail Mary pass. Um, I, w- I mean, like, I think Bobulovich was the quarterback. He, um, he tried to throw a Hail Mary in the end zone. Um, couldn't get it. Um, and that was your ball game. Um, I really would want to know Ryan Shelby's situation next year. I really would want to know where does he fit in all this next year for Coach John Hurston. He's your best athlete next year. That's what it is going to be. So I'm very curious to see where North Farmington goes next year, especially because I don't know where the talent pool is right now with them. And they could have another year where they could struggle again next year. I mean, that's very possible for Coach John Hurst, and it's very unusual for them. You know, and then to see John Harrington down in the um, sidelines again, you know, that's very interesting. So, you know, for me with North Farmington, you know, they've got a lot of work ahead of them. Um, I think, you know, um, they're going to have to find a way to make sure that they, um, you know, they can they can get better real quick. And, you know, this is the second straight year they missed the playoffs. So, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens them going forward there. Um, Bloomfield Hills on their side, finishing the season strong. Um, winning two straight, big deal, of course, winning over Oxford, 7-3. And then, of course, winning this one, 28-21. It does give an indicator, but you do lose your quarterback um, and C.J. Jackson. Um, that'll be a big loss for them. They do lose um, several players as well. Um, their JV wasn't bad, but... I think when you look at Bloomfield Hills, um, you know, I, I just think they're going to be a team to really watch for. Depends what division they're going to be in next year. So that's something to really watch for going forward there in that case. Um, Ro- I mean, Roseville 28, Harper Woods 0. Um, it was going to be a tall order for Harper Woods against a very good Roseville team. Um, it was going to be a very tall order. Um for Harper Woods, you know, first year in a new league, it was going to be tough for Harp, for Coach Rob Oden and his team. Um, I think getting a taste of life in the OA, I think it's going to help them going forward. Um, I think Harper Woods are going to be just fine um, heading into next year. I really think that Coach um, Rob Oden has got a good chance to be really good um, again next year. I, I mean, like, we'll see what happens. I mean... Yeah, I think it's going to depend where they where the, where the um, league puts them in the division next year. I mean, like, I'm curious to see where that happens. So we'll see what happens. But for Harper Woods, you know, the experience of being in the, um, playing in the um, white this year, it was going to be a challenge. You know what I mean? And, you know, it was going to be tough for them to make playoffs. But, you know, they had some games where they, you know, had some really tough losses. I mean, Rochester was one. Groves was one. Um, they're, they're right there with everybody. I mean... You know, but it is what it is with Harper Woods right now. It really is. Um, Rochester 34, Detroit Renaissance 21. Um, Rochester won that got in the playoffs with a win in this game. Um, you know, they needed a win there. Um, I There were some pundits that said about possibly Detroit Renaissance going there and upset Rochester. Um, wasn't the case, but you got to give... Um, Coach Eric Vernon, a lot of credit leading this team to the postseason for the first time since 2010. We're not counting the COVID year. Um, so when you really look at Rochester, um, it's an interesting dynamic with them. You got Alex Bueno there. You got um, Grant Cagano running back. Jaden Bolden at wide receiver. But we're, when they when they play Stony Creek, they still had that city um, that city issue. We're going to break that down. We talked the postseason matchups. Um, and there's a lot of them. Um, so we're going to see what happens there in that one here, but for Rochester coming, going in the playoffs for the first time since, um, 2010, big deal for them. Um, we're going to see what happens with Rochester, um, when they play Stony Creek in the first round of the playoffs. Um, Groves 14, Seahome 7. Um, when you look at this game, it could have went either way. Credit to Groves. They needed that game to get in the playoffs. They got into the playoffs. Um, I will be very curious to see what happens with them in their um, in their matchup with um, you know coming up. I mean, like Rose getting in there. Seahome, they're reeling a little bit, but I think they're fine. I mean, I'm not 
pressing the panic button. I thought Gary Griffith's defense was really good for Seahawk. They just got to get more from the Kinney brothers. Um, and I think they will. Um, we'll see what happens going forward with Seahawk. Um, going forward into the postseason. So, you know, so something to really watch for, um, you know, in that game, recapping that game. Um, A&T 28, Rouge 21. Um, what do you say for A&T? I mean, A&T finished 7-2, and two, played one of the most vicious schedules in the state. Um, I really like that they got rewarded in the first round, but they're in a tough district. Um, but... Then again, you know, a and might be probably the most dangerous team in this district because of Isaiah Marshall. Now, their defense could be is very iffy, but you know what? I mean, they did just enough against River Rouge. I mean, Rouge is a good team. They are a really good team. So, when you look at A&T, um, you know, they're in a really interesting spot. So, we'll see what happens with them going forward. But a and in a nice spot. Um... Um, Chippewa Valley, 34, Oxford, 14. Um, you know, it was, it with Oxford, it's it's hard for me, you know, to talk Oxford. You know, especially what they've had to go through. I mean, with everything that they've gone through. I mean, you know, just the, with the tragedy, with the, um, you know, with the tough schedule. I mean... It was going to be a challenge for Coach Jack Lyons' team this year. It was going to be a real challenge. Um, I, they're, I think they're going to be better next year for sure. Um, Dominic Cassisi there. You got Jake Champagne at wide receiver. Um, the running game is going to be a question mark for them. Um, I'll be curious to see what Oxford has next year, but I think they're going to be much better next year. Um, you know, for them, I think, you know, it was going to be a tough year for them to start. You know, it was going to be a tough year for them anyway. You know, and it was going to be a challenge for them. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I kind of wish they would have gotten the playoffs. Um, you know, but, um, I, I mean, like, it was a tough match for them against Chippewa Valley. Um, they did score 14 points, which is, a, which is a good sign for them going forward. The offense really was the problem for them all year long. It wasn't their defense. It was their offense. So when I look at Oxford, um, I think next year if they can shore up things offensively, I think they're going to be in the in the postseason conversation next year. I really do. Um, Clarkson fit the Oak Park fourteen. Um, you know, Clarkson's rolling right now. I mean, they are playing their best football right now. We think Clarkson playing well. Watch out for the Bowman twins. I am really high on these two set of twins. I think they're going to be. They are the future of Clarkson football. It's both Bowman twins. They're both running backs. Um, one of them is really good. I mean, like, I, I mean, they're gonna be they're gonna be the future Clarkson football is the Bowman twins. They're gonna be, you know, you got Desmond Steppens had a nice year, nice game. Um, he's had a nice year. Um we're gonna preview their postseason game with Lapeer. Um, which is if you're Lapeer, I don't know what to say, but for Clarkston, winning that one, 50-14 over Oak Park, getting a lot of their kids a chance to play. Um, that says a lot right there. Oak Park, you know, with them, they were young this year, um, playing a tough schedule, not easiest. But I think with them, I think they're going to be better next year. Um, I think Oak Park will be a team to really, really watch for going forward. Um who knows? They can use this last two years as motivation. Who knows? So we'll see what happens there with that one. Um, West Bloomfield, 16. Utica Eisenhower, 13. Um, West Bloomfield basically had Kenny Jones at quarterback. He played virtually everywhere for them. Um, Jones had an incredible night against um, Utica Eisenhower. He, I mean, he had an incredible night. I mean, don't get me wrong. Kenny Jones had... He went... He went nuts in that one. He had um, he had 27 carries for 164 yards and a touchdown, and he also threw a nine-yard touchdown pass. That says a lot where where West Bloomfield was. I mean, without playing without Samaj Morgan, playing out Raekwon Nance, that was going to be difficult in its own right. Going against a really good defense in Utica Eisenhower, um, but yeah, you know they found a way and won that game. Their defense was magnificent against Preston Crum. 
They were magnificent. Um, give credit to um, the Lakers. We're going to preview their um, postseason matchup, which was just an absolute, like, just yikes. Just absolute yikes. I mean, we're going to see what happens there in that one. We're going to preview that one. Um, and then we have Stony Creek 21, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay 20. Um, heck of a game here. Um, John Fogler had a big night. They ended up blocking a field goal attempt to win the game for New Baltimore and Bay getting the playoffs. Um, Stony Creek found a way to get in. Their defense found a way. The whole team found a way. To me, that's just a resemblance to the armor of culture that Stony Creek has um, under Coach Nick Merlo. And that says a lot right there. Um, Stony Creek, give credit to them. They, they deserve to be in the postseason. They finish here at 5-4. Um, they get they get a lot of credit, a lot of props to Stony Creek. You know, especially with the way that they've been through the adversity they've been through. I mean, just a lot of credit there for the Cougars. And then Celine forty nine, Lake Orion twenty one, Lake Orion ran to a bus on CJ Carr. I mean, CJ Carr is the real deal. He had three hundred eighty three total yards, four passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. Um, Lake Orion's defense just didn't stand a chance all night. They just didn't. Um, but this defense has had some problems all year long, especially against good teams. They gave up 42 to Rochester Adams. They gave up 44 to Clarkston. Um, and then you give up um, you give up now 49 to Celine. Second straight year, you're giving up over 40. Now, against Celine, you gave up 40, 34 two year, last year, and then you get 49 here. Something's the problem here. Offense has still got some fumbleitis issues. Um, other than that, I mean, Lake Orion, Lake Orion, you know, they're in the playoffs. I mean, last team in in Division One. I. I mean, but they've got to fix some things, especially defensively. I mean, they've really got to fix some things. Um, now let's go from that's my take on Week Nine. Um, you know, on all the games from last week. Now let's look at the playoff scenarios. Um, la- I mean, I was all over the blog last week um, talking about <laughs> the postseason matchups. I mean, and now they're all out. Um, the matches have been set. They're announced, and I'm going to break these matchups down, do my projections later on in the show here. Um, let's start with Division Three. Um of course, Avondale gets into the postseason, um, you know, with the record they had, and then they get a rematch with Birmingham Brother Rice in the first round. Um, this is a rematch of a 58 nothing game last year. Um, Avondale last year squeaked into the playoffs um, in Division Three. I know my co-host, Ian Locke, um, we talked about Avondale. Um, he wasn't too fond of Avondale getting in the postseason last year, but they ended up getting in there. Um, but this is a but last year's game was a 58 nothing blowout at Wisner Stadium in favor of Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, Brother Rice just played Detroit Cast Tech last week and lost 33-14. That says something right there. And this is a very difficult match for Avenel because, one, Avenel has not played the schedule that Birmingham Brother Rice has. Of course, Birmingham Brother Rice plays in the Catholic League Central, which is one of the most vicious leagues in the state, and you think about it next year, you bring in all those Toledo schools in there, oh boy. <laughs> um, yikes. Um, or Avondale, you know, this is a difficult matchup because the schedule's component. One, you know that they're going to have a clear advantage talent-wise against you. I mean, but the good news for Avondale is you're at Dick Bye Field. You're at your home field. Um, that does matter here. And it's a difficult matchup for Avondale because of the fact, you know, that you're in a tough scenario where you're playing it. It's a difficult matchup. I mean, it's obvious where it's at. So if you're Avondale, you know, you're going like, what do I got to do to get to not play Birmingham Brother Rice? What do I got to do? It's a difficult matchup to say the least. It really is. Uh, but every expert that I talked to projected that this would be the matchup with Birmingham Brother Rice and Avenue. On the other side of that, you have Detroit Renaissance taking on Wall Lake Western. 
Wall Lake Western is they're they're good. Are they a, they're a good team this year? Are they a great team? No, they are not. Do I think they're going to get by Detroit Renaissance? Sure, I think they're going to get by them. Um, albeit if it's Birmingham Brother Rice, I think they're going to give them problems. If it's Avondale, they could. I mean, I think when you look at this matchup for Avondale's sake, this is a tough matchup for you. Really is. Um, so you're going to have, if you're Avondale, you got to figure out and say, okay, you know, how am I going to slow the game down? If you're Tyler Herzog, you're going to have to slow the game down against Birmingham Brother Rice and keep that defense on the field. If you don't, it's going to be very similar to what happened last year. So if you're Avondale, you have got to control tempo. You have to control it like it is a basketball game. You do that, you might have a shot to pull off the upset. If not, it's going to be a route. So we'll see what happens in that one. We're going to do my projections, as I mentioned, at the end of the show here. Um, so, but for Avenue, it's a tough matchup for you. It really is. Um, next, let's go to Division Two. Um, for Farmington. Oh, man. I thought Farmington would play either Groves or um, maybe Waterford Mott in the first round. Now, Waterford Mott, they got sentenced to play Saginaw Heritage. That's a difficult matchup for Waterford Mott going against Saginaw Heritage. Don't be surprised if Saginaw Heritage beats them. I would not be surprised if they do. Saginaw Heritage is a sleeper in Division Two. They really are. I think they can give water from out everything. Don't be surprised they beat them. Don't be surprised. Um, but when you look at Farmington, how they lost to Utica was mind-boggling. That game cost them a, tr a home game. And to make matters worse, you got to go down to Temperance to take on the kicking mules of Temperance Bedford. That is difficult. They used to have grass lat a couple years ago. Now they got turf now. But could you just imagine yourself if you're Coach Jason Albright having to travel from Shiawassee Street down, two, down 275 or you could take I-75 to Detroit all the way down to Temperance. Pass Monroe down to Temperance. That is a difficult, difficult drive. Going 275 to I-75, that is a very difficult drive. So if you're Farmington, this is an actual road trip for you. Going down there to Temperance Bedford, it is a difficult, difficult matchup. My suggestion for Farmington, get there early. Because if you get there at about 530 or 6 o'clock, you're in some trouble. If you get there at 4 o'clock, negate the travel advantage that Temperance Bedford is going to get because of you having to travel down there, then if you get there by 4 o'clock, negates the travel advantage. I mean, yes, you got some playmakers of Dominic Pesci and um, Cam Petaway, from Keyshawn Wilson, um, but it's going down to Temperance Bedford. It's going to be really interesting. This is the same team that knocked off Celine 7 nothing two weeks ago. They shut down CJ Carr. And a five-star recruit going to Notre Dame. They shut him down. They held that offense to nothing. I can just imagine what they're going to do against Dominic Peschel. That's going to be that's going to be very interesting how Jason Albright, Coach Farmington, how he handles that matchup going down to Temperance. And also handling that match against a really good Temperance Bedford team. That is a very difficult matchup for Farmington. And if they get by that, the possibility of seeing Livonia Franklin in the next round, that's very real right now for Farmington. Really is. Just really difficult for them. Just a difficult spot for Farmington. Really is. Um, on the other side, you got. Warren Mott taking on Groves. Um, this one's interesting. Um, these two teams were meet a couple years ago, but Groves had to forfeit their season because of an ineligible player. Um, but now this match is happening. Um, 
I think this is a very interesting matchup. Um, I think Groves is running on house money right now. Warren Mott really hasn't been tested against the OA as much as Groves has. Um, I think Groves is more better tested. So that's something to really look at heading in that game is how will Groves respond after an emotional win against Seaholm, you know, and then get yourself ready for Warren Mott. Because there is a possibility you could play your arch rival Seaholm again. It is a real possibility. But you do get a home game out of this. You get a home game out of this. You're rewarded with one. It'll be very interesting to see what happens in that matchup. It really will be. And then there is Ferndale taking on Seaholm. Ferndale was the last team in Division 2. And they get to play. I mean, like, you know, after all that, after all that, won the gold this year. Had some good wins. Um, had some good wins against them. Um, you know, they knocked off. I mean, they did really well against the goal. Knocked off Avondale. It was a big win for them at the time. Um, the win against St. Clair Shore Sot Lake was a huge win for them at the time as well. So, but for Coach Eric Royal to have only 25 kids on your team, that says a lot where this program's been. They've been through a lot of adversity. Really have been. Now you get to go to Seaholm in the Maple Forest, taking on a team that runs a veer. And you look at Seaholm, here's a team that basically, you know, they're, they've lost two straight. I mean, albeit to Farmington and to Groves, um, but you still get a number one seed in your district. So that's a big deal for you. You tend to avoid Warren D. LaSalle in the regional. That's a good thing for you. It really is. So. When you look at Seaholm, you know, I think if Seaholm were to play Livonia Franklin in the next round, hypothetically, I think Seaholm matches up really well against Livonia Franklin. But that's far away down the road. But I think with the Maples, I think, you know, this is a good spot for them. Despite the two losses, um, both Kinney brothers are there. That's a big deal. And we're going to see what happens. So, Seaholm, I like their draw. Groves, I like their matchup. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, Ferndale's a tough draw for you. Taking on Seaholm. Um, and then Warren Mott, I know, completing the um, 14 district there. Um, be really interested to see what happens. Um, when you look at... Now let's go from Division 2 to Division 1. Um, when you look at Division 1, it's interesting. I mean, the OA is pretty loaded. Um, has a loaded, a loaded region um, in division in region two. Um, but there's a couple of teams that are in different regions. I mean, like you look at, of course, region four, um, which I was completely shocked about. Um, let's look at our first matchup. It's Troy against Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, when you look at this matchup here. Um, for A and T, this is this is a perfect matchup for you because you have played a tougher schedule. You have played a you have played you have one of the best quarterbacks in the state, Isaiah Marshall. Um, you have a pretty good balanced wide receiving attack. Your defense has been really hot and cold, but you get Troy in the first round. I'm not knocking on Troy, but here's the here's the bottom line for you. And I'm gonna be a, try to be a therapist to you. You have not played the schedule that Southfield Arts and Tech has. Your defense is very good, but you haven't seen a quarterback like, like Isaiah Marshall. Your offense has been almost vanilla all year long. I mean, you're going to get severely tested against A&T's defense. Now, albeit A&T's defense was absolutely horrible week, first two weeks of the year. But they bounced back some. They didn't look great against West Bloomfield, but had a nice game against Rouge where they ended up getting a fumble out of that. Um, I think when you look at, when you look at, this is a dream matchup for A&T. Really is. Because, but I was shocked that they would send Troy, 
you know, to um, they would send Troy to Southfield. I was more shocked what the MHA did to West Bloomfield. I mean, to me, that is a travesty, what they did to West Bloomfield. I mean, you look at West Bloomfield, you know, this year, 8-1, basically, I mean, they, they didn't have Raekwon Nance for nearly a quarter of the season because, because, of, his, because of an injury. Then you had Samaj Morgan who had to sit out a game because of suspension. And now, you know, and then you get this. You get Detroit Cast Tech in the first round. I was looking at the scenarios for West Bloomfield before coming here. And I said, okay, if they played Novi, it's a great matchup for them. If they would have played, you know, and I was thinking they were going to play Novi in the first round. It would be a rematch of a game last year that West Bloomfield, that I was at last year when West Bloomfield basically beat Novi and they still made mistakes making, making some real bad penalties. And then I thought about, okay, what about Troy? Maybe move Troy West to play West Bloomfield. You know, that would be, you know, that would have been a great match for West Bloomfield. They didn't do that. So now you put Detroit Cast Tech in here. They're coming off of, uh, they, come, they came off a big win against um, Birmingham Brother Rice last week at Bloomfield Hills. They, they put up 54 against Southfield Arts and Tech week one. Really haven't, I mean, they just knocked off Detroit Martin Luther King two weeks ago. And they're the, they're the defending Detroit Public School League champions. And their reward is to play West Bluefield in the swamp in the first round. How do I explain this? How do you explain this? The fact that Detroit can't, I mean, you had Dearborn who is on. You could have put Dearborn against Detroit Cast Tech. You could have done that. And instead you send Detroit Cast Tech Northwest to West Bloomfield. That's inexcusable. That's shocking, to say the least. I mean, it's the Valley Sports Game of the Week. I, it, me, the media, I mean, there's just got to be involved with the media here. It really is. Because to me, West Bloomfield should have got better. They should have deserved better. You know, you reward Northville to play Novi and Novi Detroit Catholic Central plays Dearborn. You could have just done was send West Bloomfield to Novi. You could have done that and send Dearborn over to Detroit to play Detroit Cast Tech in Southfield. Southfield could have got a number one seed. Instead, you know, you're and instead West Bloomfield has to go play Detroit Cast Tech. How fair is that? You tell me. Now we go to um now we go to um Lapeer at Clarkston. Um this is an interesting one. Um when you look at Lapeer and Clarkston, Lapeer's won has lost Lapeer's basically dominated everybody with the exception of Davison and Clarkston. Davison just beat them last week. Um in Lapeer, and Clark just whooped them 48-13 two weeks ago. Lapeer was coming in undefeated in that game. They met Ethan Clark. He had four rushing touchdowns in that game. Makes it better for Clark since at home. Um, if you're Lapeer, and you're thinking to yourself, I've got to play Clarkson again? Really? Really? This is we just played them two weeks ago and got killed. And you're giving us Clarkson again? Oh my goodness. We don't match up with you. We don't match up with Clarkson. That's the bottom line. We really don't match up with the Wolves at all. I mean, you could put I mean look I mean like I mean like um Clarkson started Steven Kozniak at quarterback last week. That tells you something. Now, two weeks ago against the player, that tells you something. That really does. Because, and Kozniak had a heck of a, had a nice game against him. 
I'm hoping the sports directors at ABC 12, NBC 25, and WNEM um, get to know the get to know the Clarks and Wolves because you look at that district and you have on the other side you have Grand Blank and Davison in there. That's interesting because you know Clarkson I know wants another shot at Davison. They lost to Davison week one. They, I mean, they basically, you know, Davison exposed Clarkson's defense in that game. I think Clarkson's defense is better now than they were uh, nine weeks ago. Um, I think Ethan Clark's better than what he was nine weeks ago. Um, All that pending, if that were the matchup, Davison... And Clarkson, that game would be at Davison at Cardinal Stadium. Um, and I think Clarkson matches up much better against Davison this time around. Um, albeit they'll probably wear the same uniforms. I mean, Clarkson will be wearing white. Davison probably either red or um, Cardinal or gold. I mean, if, were, if that was a matchup. So when I look at this matchup here and, you know, and say, okay, with Lapeer, I mean, both Davison and Clarkson have had Lapeer's number. For Clarkson, you're playing Lapeer first. You're doing a gold rush game. Now, albeit, I know Adams might have a case about the name gold rush. Um, but when you look at this matchup, you know, this is a perfect matchup for Clarkson. It's at home. You're making Lapeer travel. Um, and I know Lapeer fans, I know are not big fans, haven't traveled down to Clarkson. And you've won seven straight against them. Stats matter. Numbers matter. Stats matter in that game. We'll see what happens in that one. We will see. Um, Lake Orion at Adams. Um, this one's interesting because, you know, when you look at this matchup here, it's a rematch of a 40-21 Adams win over Lake Orion. Um, a lot of speculation going around, um, surrounding Adams, um, not going into it, but I think when you look at Adams and, and say, okay, this is a good district for you, you know, it's a winnable district. You have all three Rochester's and Lake Orion in here. You beat all three of them. So... I think if you look at this matchup here, I think the last team Adams wanted to see in this district was Lake Orion for a couple reasons. One, Lake Orion, you know, the second time they play a team, you know, has always been very tough. Always has been. Um, Lake Orion's had some success against Adams in the past. Um, so when you look at this matchup here, I'm curious to see how Lake Orion's defense matches up against Severe. Really curious because when you look at Adams, you know, the way they've been rolling with the Veer, and they've been playing pretty good football lately. It's a difficult matchup, to say the least, for Lake Orion. The defense has not been very good the last two last few weeks. That is a big concern. If you're Coach Chris Bell, that's a big concern. Um, and then on the flip side, Adams' defense has been solid. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens in that game over at Adams. Um, you know, everybody's going to say they're Lake Orion's a big underdog. I don't think they're necessarily a big underdog as you think they are. I really don't. Um, but we'll see what happens. We will see what happens there. And then the um, last game of the playoffs, the preview, is Rochester at Stony Creek. Um, this one's interesting. Because Stony Creek is coming off an emotional win against New Baltimore Anchor Bay. Um, they have, this is a rematch of a game two weeks ago, played at Stony Creek, won by the Cougars, 43-22, um, two weeks ago. So, when I look at this game here, and, you know, Rochester's got a city problem. Stony Creek, you know, there's really no pressure on the Cougars at all in this game. I believe all the pressure in the world is on Rochester because they're the ones that have the city problems. They're the ones that have been struggling. 
they're the ones, you know, against the, there are tribals. You know, when you look at Stony Creek and Adams, you know, I mean, like, the, the history, we know the Adams history. They haven't beaten them since 1996. It's been a long while since they've also beat Stoney. Um, and he just lost to him earlier in the season as well. So, for me, with Stony Creek, it's an op for Rochester, it's an opportunity to exercise their demons. It really is. It really is an, it's an opportunity for them to exercise their demons. And if they can do that, you know, if they feel they can win this district, they're going to have to exercise a couple demons. You know, with maybe three demons. With the likely of two demons. So that's how I'm looking at with Rochester. I mean, it's a difficult matchup for you. Going against Stony Creek. Do I think it's going to, is it going to be a much better game? Maybe. Um, Stony Creek's going to have, I mean, Rochester's going to have to play much better offensively against a good Stony Creek defense. Um, so we'll see what happens in that one, but it's a, it's a really interesting matchup, really interesting scenario to see what happens in that one. Okay, now let's go to my projections here. Um, we're going to preview, um, we're going to go to the Division Three first, games first. Um, I'm also going to bring in also the, um, the non-league games that, um, that the non-district games that the, all these teams are in as well. So we're going to break those down a little bit as well. Um, but not real much. Um, let's look at our first district, which is in um, Division Three. Let's look at um, you know, let's look at Wal let's look at Detroit Renaissance against Wall Lake um, Western. Um, this district here, that one's going to take on the winner of Birmingham Brother Rice and Avondale. Um, I think this one here has got Wall Lake Western all over it. Um, Western's been pretty good all year long. Not the greatest team. Um, they they look vulnerable. They could be had. Um, but I'm going to take Western here over, um, Detroit Renaissance. Um, I think it'll be a blowout there in that one. Um, and then you have Birmingham Brother Rice and Avondale here. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the previous rematch, um, I just think that Avondale is going to be ready, prepared, ready to go, just everything situated and well prepared and all that. But. I just think it, Brother Rice too much. Um, the schedule they played, really difficult schedule. They played a, um, you know, Avondale. I'm very concerned about their um, non-league. Um, I just think that at the end of the day here, um, Brother Rice will be too much for Avondale. Um, and I think the Warriors will move on to take on the another set of Warriors in the um, district final over at Walt Lake. Um Western to take, I mean, like, Avondale, it's going to be tough for them in this matchup. I think they're going to put up a fight. I really do, but end of the day here, I'm just going to take the, um, I'm just going to take Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, just too much Warriors in this one. Um, let's go now from D3 to D2. Um, you got Dearborn Heights Crestwood taking on, um, taking on, um, Livonia Franklin. Um, like I said, this matchup here, um, I'm going to take Livonia Franklin this one. I just think that the um, Patriots have played really good football as of late. Um, they've been rolling. Um, Dearborn Heights Crestwood, I think, is going to be overmatching this one. Um, don't be surprised it's over by the first half. Um, so I'm going to take the um, Patriots in this one pretty convincingly there. Um, and then you have Farmington going down to Temperance Bedford to take on the Kicking Mules. Um, when I look at this matchup here, the travel is going to play a factor unless Farmington leaves at about what leaves at about two thirty, um, maybe two o'clock. Try to get down there to around four o'clock. If you can get down there by four o'clock, minimizes the travel effect. Um, if they do, if Farmington gets there by five o'clock, I think Temperance Bedford wins. If Farmington gets there by 4 o'clock, I think they win. So, when I look at the... T it all comes down to timing. It all comes down to timing. It all comes down to traffic. The travel down there is going to be the most critical. It depends what time the bus leaves from Farmington down to Temperance. If they, if they arrive at 4 o'clock... 
they have a good chance, I think, to, to win this game. If they don't, they get there at 5, 5.30, then I think Farmton season's over. Um, I, think, I think the kicking mules is going to win this game. And that's unfortunate because they have the defense to play well against Dominic Peschel. I don't know about Farmington's, you know, they, they haven't been able to finish games. I mean, they didn't finish against um, Redford, um, Ipsley, and Lincoln um, in week one. And then last week against Yuka, they didn't finish. So I'm going to take Temperance Bedford over Farmington in this one. It's been a good year for the Falcons. But I just think the travel will be too much for them in this game. Um, we'll see what happens there, but I think the travel will be too much. Um, then we go to Ferndale and Seaholm. Um, this one's interesting. Tough match for Ferndale. Seaholm trying to bounce back after losing two straight games. Um, I like Seaholm in this one. Um, I think because of the veer, um, Ferndale will put up a fight in this game. Um, but I just don't think that they're going to have enough against a good Seahawk team that runs severe. Um, we'll see what happens in that one, but I really like the, um, you know, the Maples over the Eagles in that one. Um, then you have Warren Mott against Groves. Um, the Marauders, um, you know, when you look at this matchup here, um, Groves got a home game out of it, came off an emotional win against Seahawk. Um, in this one here, I'm going to take Groves in this one. It sets up the Battle of Birmingham in the district final um, over at Seaholm. Um, Groves has really got a lot of confidence since that Seaholm win. That's a big deal for them. Um, so we'll see what happens in that game. Um, I'm going to take the um, Falcons over the Marauders, um, you know, setting up the stage for that next week's showdown between Groves and Seaholm. That'll be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, um, if those two teams were to play in that one. Um, let's go now from Division 2 to Division 1. Um, let's go with um, Davison and Grand Blank. Um, this matchup's interesting. Davison beat Grand Blank earlier in the year at Davison. Um, I, I think it's going to be more of the same. Um, Davison, really good. Um, got, quarterback's not bad. Running back's not bad. So I'm going to take the Cardinals at home over um, Grand Blank. Um, they're going to move on. Pretty convincingly over Grand Blank. Um, so I got Davison over um, over Grand Blank. And then that sets the stage between Lapeer and Clarkston. Um, Clarkston's had Lapeer's number. I know a lot of people in Lapeer are sick and tired of it, uh, playing Clarkston. Um, I just see this continuing. Uh, Ethan Clarkston have a big game. Being at home says a lot. Um, I just think that you know, when you look at this game here, it doesn't matter who Coach Justin Pintar plays at quarterback. If it's Mike, H Mike Hine or um, Steven Kozak, um, they're both going to get the job done regardless. Um, I think, watch out for Brady Cozen. I think he's going to have a big game here. I think he's due to have a big game in this one. And I think he will. Um, and also being at home, not sure why they're doing a goal out there at Clarkston for some reason. Not sure why. Um, even though they were all blue. Um Unless they have some gold jerseys, you know what I mean, or something. But I just don't understand why they're doing a gold out. But it won't matter. I'm gonna take Clarkson this one um, over um, over um, Lapierre and setting the stage up for Davison. That'll be really interesting if those two teams were to play. It would be a rematch of a Week One game, um, you know, up at Davison, up in 15 in Genesee County. So that'll be something to really watch for in that match up there. Um, region two, district two, you got um you got Lake Orion at Adams. Um Lake Orion's an underdog in this one. They really are. Um so and usually a team that plays nothing to lose, everything to gain, is the most dangerous. This is Adams' best team they've had in a long while. This is might be Adams' best class they've had in a long while. This senior class is really good at Adams. Um the pundits are gonna say Adams beats Lake Orion. Um, you know, but don't be surprised if Lake Orion upsets Adams. If they do, that would send huge shockwaves around the state if Lake Orion did that. Tough matchup, though, for the Dragons, especially defensively. If they shore up things defensively, they could they could pull a big upset off. But if they can't, you know, I expect to be an Adams route 
in front of the gold rush. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens in that one there. Then you have Rochester versus Stony Creek. Um, can Rochester exercise their demons? That's the big question I see with Rochester. Can they exercise their demons? If they do, you know, they can knock off Stony Creek. That's the first step to actual healing. Um, if they don't, it's another loss to another Rochester school. Rochester's had success against teams that are not in their school district. When they played against Adams and Stoney, that's where the problems are. Yes, this is a big game for Coach Nick Merlo because, you know, he used to be at Rochester. Merlo's at Stoney Creek. He has built that program into a perennial contender. Um, in this game here, I'm going to take Stony Creek. They beat him once, 43-22, two weeks ago. I'm not sure how Rochester's improved in this game. I really am not. So, but I'm going to take Stony Creek over Rochester in this one. Um, so we'll see what happens there in that game. We will really see what happens there. And then our last region, um... You got Troy and at Southfield Arts and Tech. As I mentioned earlier in the podcast, this is an absolute perfect matchup for Southfield because of, okay, you've played a more tougher schedule. You have played a, you have a very good quarterback in Isaiah Marshall. You have played, you know, you're playing against teams in the white that are really good teams. You have played River Rouge. You have played Detroit Cast Tech. You have played Clarkston. You know, those are not easy games. And you have managed, I mean, like, your two losses, and you played West Bloopin. Your two losses were the red teams. But you have managed to beat everybody else. That says a lot right there. And then you look at Troy. You have a, your two losses this year were to Sea Home, where you were blown out 52 nothing. And then you lost to North Farmington 9 nothing. That's a combined 61 nothing. Could you just imagine how Southfield would feel? Don't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Southfield put up 60 this week against Troy. Don't be surprised if that happens. I mean, I think the Warriors got a really nice draw here. Really nice draw. Because I originally thought they would play Detroit Cast Tech. But instead, you know, they get Troy in the first round. So either way, I'm going to take Southfield. Regardless. Because of, obviously, you got the, um, you know, obviously, you know, Isaiah Marshall's big deal. I think he has a nice game here. Don't be surprised he gets benched in the second half. Don't be surprised. Because they're going to be up. They might be up pretty big by then. So that's something to really watch for. And then the last game, the Bally Sports game of the week, uh, it's on Bally Sports Detroit. Um, Detroit cast Tech against West Bloomfield. You know, I had a rant about it. Um, just really unfortunate for West Bloomfield, you know, having to play Detroit cast Tech in the first round and that Detroit cast Tech got sent Northwest and instead of, you know, they could have sent Dearborn over there. Um, you know, so it was really unfortunate, you know what I mean, to send um, for West Bloomfield. You know, for them, I thought they would have went to. They should have gone to Novi instead of them having to play, um, having their home district and playing against um, Detroit Cast Tech. And if they win that possible rematch with Southfield Arts and Tech um, in the district final, um, I do like West Bluebeam on this game because of you know Samaj Morgan coming back, Kenny Jones coming back. If they can get Raekwon Nance back, it's a big deal for them. Um, so we will see what happens there. Um, Detroit Cast Tech's a really good team, as we know, the defending Detroit Public School League champions against the um, Co-Oe Red Chance. That is a really interesting matchup. Um, 7.30 kickoff on Valley Sports Detroit. So we'll see what happens in that match going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. I wish everybody the best of luck this week in the um, Division One State in the, in the state Playoffs in Divisions 1, 2, and 3 this week. Stay tuned to the blog at Saginaw Bay at blogspot.com for all the latest information regarding the postseason. The football, soccer, volleyball starting up coming up soon. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward here. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody.